Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Daniel Umstead, host of the RG Radio Show. Yo, I got some amazing guests. So I'm probably not even probably, I'm way past the 200 marker as far as the amazing folks that have come onto the show. But today, today, I got an amazing individual, uh, goes by the name of Brian Elon. But first, before we get to start bragging about him and what he's about, let me tell you about his bio real quick. So the recurrent theme in uh, Brian's life has always been money. Uh, from the age of 13, he began working to save up enough money to buy his first car. And even before his 16th birthday and being fully legal to drive, he bought his car. Uh, later on in life, he fell in love with business and entrepreneurship and started his first business in 2012. After diving in head first, having no idea what it takes to run a successful business, he shut it down three years later. Next came the dig to discover what went wrong, which involved many courses, mentorships, and books, all leading to the next chapter of opening Dream Biz Coaching. The mission was to help first-time life coaches be successful and not make the mistakes that Brian made running his first business. After helping clients for a few years, life took another turn, as it often does. This turn was back to a focus on money, more specifically the financial side of life insurance. Brian began working for an insurance marketing company on Keffer & Associates in 2022 as a marketer. His company also helped him become a licensed life insurance agent, which opened the door for what is now the focus of his service to business owners. With the relationships and products now at his disposal, Brian is on a mission to increase profits for business owners and help them generate, or excuse me, create generational wealth through his new venture, Wealthy Consultant. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Elon. Brian, what a bio, man. You know, I, I read this over like, 50,000 times, of course, prior to uh, reading it again just now. But, you know, you had your ups, you had your downs, you had your in-betweens, and now Wealthy Consultant. Uh, outside of the bio, um, tell me more about this story. Tell me more, you know, as far as the business getting built up and what led you to right now. Well, yeah, first of all, Dan, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure to be here with you. And yeah, it ups and downs. You said it. You know, life is a roller coaster. The entrepreneurship world is a roller coaster. It is not a straight line. Sometimes it looks like a bunch of scribbled mess on a sheet before you get that arrow going up. So, I mean, that's real. You know, there's no such thing as overnight success. And, you know, behind the whole story of how everything got built up, you know, I was doing, like I said in the bio, I was doing everything on my own. I was building the website. I was learning how to do Facebook ads. I was trying to figure out what copywriting was. I was going out there, knocking on doors, trying to get clients. And it just, it worked, but yet there was something missing. And I didn't know what that something was. And the mistake for me, and maybe this will apply for, you know, for you or maybe some of the other listeners, the mistake that I made was trying to, and this is really this is really funny given the rise of AI, but the mistake that I made was trying to leverage too much on technology and not actually get out there and connect with people in order to help grow my business and grow my client base. So that's the biggest mistake that I made. And, you know, once I got in there and got it going, I was very happy with it. It was basically going to be the Angie's list of natural health care providers is the first business that I started. I was very happy with it, very happy with the mission. I got into creating videos and that's how I started, you know, doing YouTube and being online more and in front of the camera, which helps in many different ways. Obviously being here with you today, being a prime example of that. And so after three years of financing my business from my personal checking account, I decided, well, that's enough of that. And so I shut it down and decided, but I'm not done. I'm not done. This entrepreneurship thing, it still, it still calls to me. And so I started researching more about what, what I was missing. Like, why did this not work? And like in the bio, mentorships, programs, books. And then I realized my mistakes. And I wanted to help other people not make those mistakes. I didn't want them to go through the same pain and the same struggle that I had went through when starting their first business and just give them a real shot to be successful. 
And that was the impetus of the name behind my Be Successful podcast, interviewing other entrepreneurs who are on the journey at different levels, you know, some at the start, some in the middle, some I've interviewed some high, high level people, but it's all about getting their experience, their real world knowledge about what's, what's really going on out there and bringing it to people who have a curiosity like I did about what's missing, what could be better. So that was the impetus behind the bio there, the story. Uh, I love that. I love that. And you know, we had talked about this, of course, um, prior to even getting on, you know, because we kind of have the same pathway, uh, especially with our podcast. We bring folks on so they could pretty much elaborate, hey, what worked, what didn't work, and what's currently working right now so folks can absorb that. And you see that, you know, a lot of people will just give up and say like, oh, because this is not working, this must be a failed business. Or because I reach to a point where it's like, all right, this is going to work well for me. You know, I'm done. You know, I'm moving on to something else. Or unfortunately, and fortunately, you know, they go back to a nine to five saying like, oh, I'll just be stuck in a rut. But you found a way to make a problem into a better solution. And that's a wealthy consultant. So uh, tell me uh, more, because I know wealthy consultant is different from coaching. Uh, why that transition? Why that jump from consultant and still talk? And I know you still have your podcast, but why they jump from consulting to, or excuse me, from coaching to wealthy consulting? That's a very good question. And I'm going to be perfectly honest and real with you right now about that. <laughs> it all came down to my confidence in the ability to provide a transformation, a true transformation. There was a lack of confidence in my ability, in my own ability. Now, whether that is true or something I made up in my head, it was still there. And I did work with some clients in my coaching. I got them good results. They gave me positive reviews, but I never truly felt like I had quote unquote it or the thing to help them make that transformation. And so when I took that turn into life insurance and got into this side of, and it, it opened a door that I never knew existed. You know, like you can go deep on so many things in life. Like if you're, if you're into cooking and barbecue, you can waste hours of your life on YouTube going into barbecue channels. I didn't even know that existed, but it's the same for insurance and specifically the financial side of the insurance business. So these, these tools that are available, they have been used for hundreds of years by wealthy families to preserve and grow generational wealth. And this is something that is not taught to anybody. I never learned it in school. I never learned about you know using life insurance as a, as a financial means to build and, and create generational wealth. Who, who gets that lesson in school? Nobody, right? But these families that have this experience, they get those lessons. They get to pass those lessons on to their children and just watch and watch and watch it grow. And that is true transformation. Because when you have the financial leverage, the financial freedom behind you, your life can open up. Not just from a business perspective, but from an emotional perspective, you feel more secure, you feel more safe, you feel happier. Uh, you know, there's this, uh, I watch a bunch of guys, you know, from Ed, I think it was Ed Milet that said this, you know, I've been, I've been broke and I've been rich and I've been happy in both instances, but I'd much rather be happy and rich. <laughs> so, and that's the power of the true transformation that having a, a guide like someone like me or another licensed insurance agent to help you on this path, that's the real transformation that can happen. And it's more tangible. It's more real and connectable because it's money. We all have and feel a certain way when it comes to money and it's very visceral. So it's very real. And that is why I've made this transition to what I know 
can have a true transformational impact on people's lives. Yeah, and I want to point out, because I definitely have, um, you know, uh, gone through, or excuse me, in, in a current couple of uh, life insurance plans, and folks, you need to understand something. It's not an instant thing, you know, the moment that you do sign up that it's like, hey, okay, great, I'm rich, right? No, it's a mm -hmm. long, it's it's a process, you know, it's not something that's going to be happening overnight. And that's the problem I think a lot of folks have with creating that generational wealth. You got to look at the key word. It's generational. So at some point, it's going to take more than just a week, maybe even a year, maybe even a decade to create that generational wealth. Because as you put it, Brian, you know, families have been doing it for hundreds of years. So they understand the system. They understand the algorithm way before even AI was even thought of. So um, time for a shameless plug in, if you will. Brian, where can folks, you know, just stop the recording right now and listening and saying like, all right, I need to get in contact with Brian right now. I've heard about it through a friend. I've heard about through a coworker that I need to get involved. How can folks get in contact with you to get that conversation started about creating their generational wealth, not only for themselves, but for their family? I'm, I'm going to do something that probably not a lot of people do. I'm going to give you my personal email address. We got the digits, y'all. We got the digits. <laughs> it's Elam Brian at Gmail. Okay. So my last name followed by my first name, no spaces, no hyphens, none of that. Elam Brian at gmail.com. If you have a goal to truly, like you, like Daniel said, play the long game and grow generational wealth. I don't care if you're starting from underwater, like your $10,000 in credit card debt, or you're starting from a better place and maybe all you have is your mortgage. It doesn't matter. And chances are there is a way for you to help grow that generational wealth no matter where you are. So if that is you, let's have a conversation. Send me an email, but don't spam me. Otherwise, you're blocked. <laughs> automatically, automatically. And you said a uh, phone number as well, Brian, that they could call you at? Uh, that one I'm going to keep close to the vest for right now. No but, problem. No problem. You know, completely understandable. Yeah, folks, don't don't be stupid and get blocked. You know, um, you get a lot of people out here that are trying to spam one another for whatever reason and trying to get information that's really not needed, that's not going to be beneficial in the long run. So shoot an email. His contact information will be at the bottom of the email. And, uh, you know, we'll take it from there. Um, other question that I have for you, what do you have access to now that gives you such a strong belief of that transformation? Well, and I, I, I kind of went into it in that long diatribe that I just went down, but I'll get a little bit more specific. So yeah. I'm focusing on two primary areas. One is going to be whole life insurance. And the reason we want to talk about whole life insurance versus term is because whole life does something called builds cash value. Now, the way that it does this is essentially you put a portion and if at the beginning, it's going to be a majority. Again, this is the long game. So you're putting a majority of that premium every month into the cost of insurance. But what is left over then gets placed into a separate account within that contract, which is your cash value account. And it grows. It has the leverage of compound interest. And if you don't know the magic of compound interest, just think do a little bit of searching, do a little bit of Googling, maybe go on YouTube and have some demonstrations about compound interest and what it can do. So it has that behind it to help grow that cash value. And over time, you can then get yourself a loan from that, ta or from that cash value. And the fun thing about that is that loan is tax-free. You do not have to pay taxes on taking that loan. The other cool thing about it is your cash value in that account, it stays at the level where you took the loan. Like you never took anything out to begin with and keeps growing from there. Now, you do have to pay back the loan, especially if you want to keep building, but it's going to be a much, much lower interest rate than the crazy credit card rates that are out there right now. And you can dictate the terms of when you want to repay it. 
So you see how this can really just put you in the driver's seat of your financial life by using these types of products. And the other one, it's called an annuity. And what an annuity basically is, it's a retirement vehicle. It's, let's say it's, uh, it's kind of like a 401k, but it grows tax deferred. So you don't have to pay any taxes on that growth until you start taking money out of it when it's time to retire. But what I like about an annuity, especially a fixed index annuity, is you can tie it to the stock market to track it. Now, it's not directly invested in the stock market. And because of that, you cannot lose money when the stock market goes down. You participate in the gains and you ride out the losses. Now, you don't make any money when the stock market goes down, but you don't lose any money either. Again, it's a very powerful tactic to play the long game to build generational wealth. And, and when I say that this is true transformation, that is exactly what it is. Because these companies have been around for hundreds of years, these insurance companies. Heck, banks even place their investments. I mean, you, you know this, you work in the banking sector. They place their money in with insurance companies as well. So they don't lose money. Now, if a bank is doing the same thing that I'm advising maybe someone to get into to build generational wealth, it's not magic. It's just math and it's real. It just makes sense. I mean, because everybody's trying to find that, you know, that secure financial goal. And I definitely grew up in the time where uh, bonds and CDs, you know, and making sure you get that right savings account. But as we get older, because, you know, had we been taught about life insurance, been taught about whole life insurance and even annuity, because, I mean, at the age of 12 or 13, you know, what kid is thinking about annuities and a life retirement plan? But right teaching a teenager about like, hey, this is what life insurance can do for you. By the time that you do get, you know, to the senior citizen age, me around the 40s, then it's like, oh, wait, this makes sense. And, you know, thankfully, we are in the times of YouTube University where you can definitely look this stuff up. And I encourage everybody, you know, the terms that me and Brian are talking about today, please research you know, prior to having a conversation uh, with Brian, only because it's just going to make that much smoother. You know, when you're going car shopping and you know you want the blue sedan with the four doors, making sure it has air conditioning, power windows, and Bluetooth and Wi Fi. Hey, you've got your list of what you need. Brian, the car salesman, is going to be like, oh, we have that one right over here in the back. But if you go in there and you're like, I need a car and I need insurance. It's like, well, what position are you in? So, you know, have that research behind you and it's only going to benefit you in the long run. Uh, so that way you can benefit your family in the long run. So uh, thank you for that. I want to jump back a little bit. We touched on be successful. One, just can I, can I just, uh, just one thing on that research? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. So when you're talking about doing research, uh, discovering what's out there for whole life insurance, for annuities, all of this, there is something that is floating around in the TikTok, Instagram reels space right now. There are quote unquote influencers who are telling people that you can get up to 34% crediting on an IUL. I'm here to tell you, this is a flat out lie. That is not real. That is not real. I don't know any industry in the financial space, save for if you got lucky on a fix and flip in real estate, where you're going to make a 34% increase in your investment within any given year. So do your research, yes, but also understand there's extremes. And unfortunately, like with any industry, even in the insurance space, there are people out there that are just telling you what you want to hear in order to get your commission. So just, just be beware, be careful. If you have questions about anything that you've seen floating around out there, again, you've got my email, shoot me a message. I'll be happy to get back with you and, and let you know, you know, what's really going on and what you can expect in your particular situation. 
Brian, I, I can't thank you enough, and I really appreciate that because, you know, folks do get caught up with the hype because these fun algorithms, you know, if you see one Instagram post or talk about purple sweaters, you'll probably let your <laughs> Instagram see something about some purple sweaters. I guarantee you I'm going to have a post about purple sweaters later. But, um, yeah, you know, and when you get caught up with that algorithm or seeing the same repeated message over and over again, you're thinking like, oh, this got to be real. This is the 25th time I've seen it. So there has to be some truth to it. So, you know, not only doing your research, reach out to Brian. So, uh, but yeah, I wanted to back up about the Be Successful podcast. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. Where can folks find it at? And um, what's your goal with the podcast? I love sharing other people's podcasts on the podcast um, because I want people to get a variety and understand like, hey, you know, it's not a business in regards to like where we're competing with one another. We want you to gain information and something like Be Successful podcast, obviously, same message. We want you to be successful. So talk about uh, the podcast if you can for a bit, Brian. Absolutely. Happy to do it. And so just one <clears throat> one real quick point. The, the Be Successful podcast is now a segment on my main podcast, which is Get Your Entrepreneurship Together. So the Be Successful segments are the one-on-one -on -one interviews like we were talking about before where I connect with other entrepreneurs that are out there doing it, get their experience and their values so we can relay it to the listening audience. And so where you can find Get Your Entrepreneurship Together, I am focusing on Spotify right now. So if you go on Spotify, type in Get Your Entrepreneurship Together, boom, you'll see a picture of me in a black t-shirt, you know, waving hello. And there you go. You can go see all the episodes that I've created so far. You know, obviously more are going to be coming down the pipeline. Um, I have hooked up with another connection that I made on social media who has started this amazing service of helping grow podcasts by getting people guests. And you basically just get put onto an email list. Your show does. And people that want to book, they just click your booking link and they come on. And so I've gotten four of those already. It's been less than a month. And uh, yeah, there are going to be more episodes coming out for sure. Uh, I'm also on YouTube. So if you search Brian Elam on YouTube, scroll down a little bit, uh, you'll see, again, my picture there. And I have the video versions of those Be Successful segments on my YouTube channel as well. I oh, appreciate that, man. Definitely going to be uh, checking those out. And a um, couple of other uh, final questions as we wrap up here. Uh, one I wanted to ask you, and it's funny because uh, this question came up on a past uh, interview that I had, work-life balance. What's your thoughts on that? You know, and what's your view on it? Because some people who are nine to fivers, you know, they're like, oh, we need that, you know, going into a job. And then I've talked to others who are entrepreneurs at heart and pretty much from the get and say like, no, you got to be obsessed with your craft. If it's two to three o'clock in the morning and you've got an idea that needs to be launched out to the world, work on it. There's no, oh, I'll wait up till 9 a.m. once I get my coffee or tea. So what's your point of view on the work-life balance? And uh, as it applies to not only those folks in the corporate world, but also in the entrepreneurship world as well. Yeah, the entrepreneurship space, of course, is just overwhelmed with information about you should do this, you should do this, because that's what I do. And look at me, I'm successful. So you should do what I do. And right. well, what I say to that is should is S-H-I-T. You know, like sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole main point of that is you got to do what's right for you. Okay. If you're comfortable getting up at four in the morning, cranking out an hour or two at the gym, and then blasting some work on your business before you head off to your nine to five, if that's you, then that is amazing. You do that. Kill it. But if you're the type of person that just like me, I'm not a morning person. Like I move like a turtle in the morning because I like my mornings to be smooth and flowing and relaxing. I like to get my coffee. Like, you know, if you're that type of person, you're not going to be grinding at four in the morning, but on the weekends or maybe after work for a little bit, you put this, you put some time in, you get that growth. So 
this whole concept of work-life balance, meh, get, just, just get it out of your head. There is no such thing as work-life balance. There is only your life, what that looks like and what your schedule allows you to do. That's it. I appreciate that, Brian. And I was uh, talking with a coach mentor a while back about this, and I was following the hype, you know, 5 a.m. work days, you know, following the uh, four, what is it, 20-hour work week or four-day work week. And I'm like, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, I could pump this out. I was setting a schedule, what I was going to be doing at 5 a.m., 5.15 a.m., 5.30, and not even so much a slug, but a slog. <laughs> like this, even after two cups of coffee i'm like what why did i choose this life and after talking with him he's like well when are you most productive i was like man like between nine and ten once i get my coffee and morning going like from 10 a.m on like i'm good he was like well just do that i'm like yeah but other people he's like but what works for you and i'm like well i guess the nine to ten he was like well follow that pathway and stay productive i was like oh man so <laughs> Brian and I are saying, what works for you? Hey, and if you're at 3 a.m., I think Mark Wahlberg wakes up at 3.30 a.m. to do a workout. God bless him. Have that. Knock yourself out. But if you know your most effective time is at 11 a.m. or maybe even 3 in the afternoon, you know, and then getting started and you work until we hours in the morning. Do what's going to work for you. Do what's going to work for your balance. So, Brian, we've been hitting gem after gem on this podcast. Uh, want to ask you, uh, what piece of advice can you give to those folks who are starting out in the business or maybe they're one or two years in and nothing's really hitting on but what can you uh, say as far as a piece of motivation to keep them going so two things with that number one be unapologetically yourself do not play it safe if you have a strong view about something relating to your entrepreneurship your business Put it out there because people don't, people don't become raving fans of mediocrity. People become raving fans of someone they can look at and either look up to or be like, that person is another version of me and they're out there killing it. I want to connect with them. So number one, be unapologetically yourself. And number two, do not be afraid to ask, especially your customers or potential customers, what they really think and what they really want. Don't be so caught up in either ego or the, the unwillingness to hear anything potentially negative about you or your business that you let it die because you're not actively asking your customer base what they want and what they do or don't like. Love that, man. I, I, I appreciate it so much. If y'all didn't get anything out of this podcast, just play the last two minutes over and over again to set you up for success. And uh, Brian, just uh, one last note, where can uh, folks find you at again, whether it be social media or even just getting in contact with you? Well, again, if you want to get in contact with me to you know go over anything generational wealth, insurance related, Elon Bryan at Gmail. Uh, if you want to find me on socials, I'm on LinkedIn. Just type in Brian Elam, you'll find me. Um, I've got a new Facebook page for Wealthy Consulting. So if you look me up on Facebook, you'll be able to find that page. It's got it's a golden W and C and a little circle logo with a white background. So you can find that page there. It's just getting started, um, but you know more content obviously going to be coming in the future. So those would be the best places to get a hold of me, LinkedIn, that Facebook page. And then of course, any direct questions, shoot me an email. Let's have a conversation. Love it. Love it. Brian, thank you again so much for coming on the show, man. Really appreciate you. And uh, looking forward to having you come back to talk uh, more about your success, man. Yeah, I, I love it, man. This has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to the RNG Radio Show. Be sure to like and subscribe for more episodes and future content. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at danielumstead.com. Stay blessed, my fellow millionaires.